Alright, as we wrap up and complete this slope deflection example in this multi-span beam, uh, in the previous step we got to the point where we had rewritten what the member end moments were, now the way they physically act on the various member ends. Uh, we have rounded those numbers to the nearest tenth of a kilonewton meter. Uh, that will actually uh, create a small little problem for us if we're really precise and careful about the shear moment diagrams, but we'll, we'll talk about what that looks like here in just a second and how to handle that. All right, so, but once we have those moments, then we can come along and, of course, just use basic equilibrium, summon moments about either end to find the various shear values, and we do that in each and every situation, and that's going to enable us then to draw shear moment diagrams and then eventually the deflected shape and do some post-analysis. Uh, before we head off onto that, I want to point out something that's going to happen here, and that's that in this middle segment, note that <coughs> we end up with the left-hand shear in the beam turning out to be going downwards and negative, and that's because of the way the end moments worked out. We're used to seeing the pattern that you see over here in the left. Both shears act physically in the same direction, but because of left end versus right end, one's positive, one's negative, and that is kind of reversed here in the middle, and that's all because we don't have any loads there, and we'll see that here also in just a moment, what it does to the uh, moment diagram. Okay, so let's take those and transfer them on down to the shear diagram in the way that we're used to doing these kinds of things. Here we got our shear in kilonewtons. We pop up by the reaction of the 257.1. The slope is given to us by the load. We come down, we're at then 140, a net of negative 142.9 or a change. That's where a little rounding error comes along. And for at least for that member, then it closes off. Now, when you have these consecutive spans like this, don't draw the shear and moment diagrams as three separate things. Do it all at one. Because when you do it at three separate ones, you mask how this system is all entirely working together. And so, for instance, here, this difference in the shear, which I have written down wrong, it should be minus 15.8 there and a minus 15.8 over on the other end, that difference in shear is in reality the reaction that's coming from EY, right? So we've got on the little joint that's in here, we've got the 142.9 coming down, but you flip the shear around on from the other side and you see that we're going to get a difference and that's exactly what we have showing up here as well. 142.9 minus the 15.8 and we get 127.1 is the reaction value that goes along with that little delta right there. Right? Again, that's why I say put these all, string these all together to help emphasize what's really happening in our system. Same kind of thing is, is true over here. This difference between the 223.4 and 15.8 is going to be our reaction for CY. And in this case, because of the directions that we've got, we've got the 15.8 coming down here, and we've got the 223.4. Sorry, yeah, 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 223.4. Four coming down there that leaves us a net of 239.2 for the vertical reaction at C. Right. And so so on and so forth. We end up with the shear diagram, march along. Again, you gotta be a little careful here about how this all flows. The rounding ears can begin to really accumulate and you won't necessarily see it on the shear diagram, but boy, you'll see the impact later on in the moment diagram. And when we do that moment diagram, of course, we're going to need to know where these various points are at for the zero shear. That one's 3.21 meters, and of course, that means the other one, 1 1.79 meters. How did I find that? Of course, just proportional triangles. We have no inflection point over in the middle segment and then out here, then uh, this will be 2.23 meters, and this will be 
seven seven meters to that particular location. Right. So now we come along and we want to draw the moment diagram. This gets a little ugly and this is not a particularly good one. This is actually my second attempt. The first time I did it I found out that I had made a math error when I calculated the shears that I had um, included the 119.8 on the end of this member but I did not include the 252.6 and so I got uh, the wrong value of the shear and then I couldn't get things to close off right. Scratching my head finally dawned on, what, dawned on me what I had done. I hadn't included that, that moment at the end. So that's why I'm saying that mistakes that you make in a shear diagram may look like they are self-equilibrating, but they will get reflected along the way. And even here, you see, I've kind of still made some mistakes. It takes a while. It'd help if I use pencil instead of ink. All right, so we start off at the negative 285.3. We come over 3.21 meters, find that change in the moment by looking at the area over here. We're at about 127, and then we drop back down to a very, almost close to zero. Now, one of the reasons I had a really difficult time trying to draw this uh, moment diagram was because I chose a scale that was too large, and that made it very difficult to use my French curve to get that in very well, and particularly why this right-hand side, I had to fall down so fast, and I couldn't just couldn't find the right place in the French curve to, to do that very well. I really need to redo this um, with a much smaller uh, scale. And then we come along, and this is where I made another mistake. We don't have a variation in the slope of the uh, moment diagram. The shear is constant, so that should have been a straight line. I finally got that in there. So we have second order, first order, and then second order again. We end up coming down to a uh, value that, of course, is minus 119.8 kilonewton meters. Then we pop up again, and so on and so forth. I haven't calculated in these instances where the inflection points are. Um, we can do this through, you know, the typical things that we, techniques that we would do, go through to do that. But let's get to the um, deflected shape. I've tried to sort of use double thickness when I drew the lines to help it stand out just a little bit better. There's a couple of interesting things to note. We know that theta b and theta c are opposite directions, and they are also relatively equal in the amounts of rotation. Now with a French curve, that's very hard to do um, to get that in there just right, just by the nature of the French curves. So you don't quite see that visual on there. Uh, one important part of trying to draw these, though, is to try to get the support settlement in there. Now this is grossly exaggerated, and that also causes some potential issues in trying to draw all this. This should, you know, proportionally 0.01 meters compared to the 5 meter span, this should be up much higher, and it would have made this um, these two rotations be by visual appearance look like they were equal and opposite. So that's another little impact here and it, it's, it, it'll be something in the reflection uh, portion of our video we'll talk a little bit more about too. But we do have this negative moment here in the middle so that means we got frowny face or hogging curvature the whole way through. Now the thing is recognize that negative curvature does not mean it's negative displacement, right? It's actually going to have to be popping up. Now it's popping up above the cord that goes between the two support movements for sure. And be, But because this cord is rotated in a counterclockwise fashion, that's why compared to the original displacement, it looks like we may not have some of the uh, displacements above. Now one flaw in the drawing is that my little orange line is sort of coming down below. I didn't do a very good job of keeping that in the right spot, but at least I'm getting the right variation of things. I got these little dashed lines that were helping me to try to draw where the approximate inflection point was at. And we got a little bit of curvature, positive smiley face to go with a positive moment here, a little negative on the end, an attempt to get zero slope there, attempt to get zero slope here, etc, etc. It's a reasonable first draft for all three of these uh, various shapes. Could be done better. It's a little cluttered. We'd like to try to clean it up. Um, but it gets us roughly where we need to be.